We are here in New York City. Why? Because it's the New York Comedy Fest. That's right. Anywhere you go in the Big Apple right now, you will see posters, billboards, electronic signs, all that action for the NY CF New York Comedy Fest. What's going on, everybody? It's me, Kayvon, the most famous half Persian comedian. Where? In the world. How do I know? Because uh, everyone has to have their little victim status these days. You have to be the first, most unique, you know, first one-armed Native American that does comedy on one foot. Everyone has to have that story. So I picked mine, the most famous half Persian comedian from Reno, Nevada, who is named Kayvon. That's pretty specific. I don't think we're gonna find another one of those. That's a minority. See, everyone, I believe, is a minority. Everyone is an individual. So instead of just trying to use your minority status to bludgeon everyone else over the head and get ahead in life, just be the best at what you do, and then people will recognize that talent. But until then, we will use those little minority status monikers, and I am the most famous half-Persian comedian in the world. If you don't have that diversity at your event, you should think about hiring me. I have not gone live in a little while, and I thought I would tell you why. But before I do, please put in the comments where you're from, what you're doing, what you're watching on TV, what you're eating, and what are you wearing <laughs> at this hour. If you don't know, in New York, it is about, it's about midnight, a little past midnight. The reason I'm going live late at night is because my show tomorrow is late at night. So I figured if anyone in the Big Apple... New Jersey, Connecticut, if you're watching this at this hour, then there's a good chance that tomorrow night at 9.30, you're going to be like, yo, what is there to do tonight? And you'll remember, oh, that guy Kayvon told me to come to Caroline's Comedy Club, Caroline's on Broadway. Speaking of Broadway, do you guys, uh, you guys watch any movies lately? I saw one, Bohemian Rhapsody. That's right, just came out in the theaters. It's the Freddie Mercury story. Many of us, if you're my age, you weren't even basically alive when Freddie Mercury was. At least you weren't allowed to pick your own music. You'd be in the back of your mom's suburban or minivan driving to swim practice, and whatever mom was playing, that was the music you were listening to. So I missed all the big hair rock stuff. I missed the Poisons and the Axl Roses, and I missed the Freddie Mercury's the queens of the world. But that was a fantastic movie. So I highly recommend it. I've never recommended a movie on my live feed, but I am telling you guys right now, go check out Bohemian Rhapsody, especially if you're our age or younger, because that was the original OG rock star of the 70s. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Anyone older watching, was Queen not the biggest band in the world? I mean, think of all the songs. When you watch the movie, you're going to see the song. We all know this one. Boys my age play t-ball, baseball, we all play this one. We will, we will, what? Millennials, answer in the comments if you know the end of that. We will. Then there's another song, after you won the t-ball game, you would mock the other team. See, they don't keep score these days. But back in those days, say, we are the... Do you guys know it? Do you know in the com... Put in the comments if you know. We are the... Already some people got it right. But there are some other great songs, too, that you wouldn't even think of. Um, if you're a fan of Wayne's World, then you would love the song that they play. I'm just a little silhouette of a man. This is like Say What Karaoke. Do you know the line that comes out of this? Mother, I killed a man. And you have to do the teeth like a, I killed a man. I can't even do the teeth, but he had these big teeth, man. And the guy in the movie had the exact same big ass teeth. What are the odds? So anyways, I see a little silhouette of a man. And you would know that line if you're from the 70s, 80s, or you know a lot about rock and roll history. And then the, the songs go on from there. Every song is, is good as far as I'm concerned. So that's what I did. Let's, I'm, I just wrote a little list of things I would tell you about what I did today. I'm checking off. Told you about Bohemian Rhapsody. Go see it. They should give me a commission on that. New York Comedy Fest is tomorrow night, 9.30 p.m. Check it off the list. Then I'm going to be in Vancouver, Canada. I want to see my Canadian peeps, eh? Come on, Canadians, eh? It's going to be a good time. I'm sorry, but if you don't come laugh, I'm not going to visit you as often, eh? 
That's Vancouver at the end of November after I eat Thanksgiving dinner. So I'm going to have to work out before I come to UA. Then I'm going to be doing four private parties for holiday events. And then Las Vegas, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. It's my first time headlining at the Laugh Factory in Las Vegas. It's the week before Christmas. And all through the house, nothing was stirring, not even a mouse. December 17th through the 23rd, I'm headlining two shows a night. It comes up to like, I think 16 shows because they're going to throw another night in there. So it, it was going to be 14. But the ticket sales are looking good, Las Vegas, where I went to high school, where I went to junior high, where I went to fourth and fifth grade, Las Vegas. Yeah, now you're going to see the name on the Tropicana sign. You used to see my name on the, block, on the black chalkboard that said, detention. This student will be here for detention, and my name was there, but now it's going to be on the big neon lights at the Tropicana. Check. Booyah. We're going in 2019 strong. A lot of people end 2018 like, oh, man, next year's going to be better. But I got to tell you guys, thanks to you, 2018 was fantastic. We are knocking them down one by one. The reason I didn't talk to you guys for over a week was I was on a cruise. Now, you know they lost my bags on the way to the cruise, so that was a big problem. I want to give you guys some cruise facts. On the cruise ship I was doing comedy on, I had to do five shows for the same people over and over and over. It makes you a better comedian. It makes you a better comedian because it's the same people sitting there. So you got to plan your jokes. You got to like, I don't want to say the same joke on Wednesday that I already said Monday. And there's families on Monday. And then it's PG-13 on Wednesday. And then on Friday, they want to rate it our show. So it was very interesting. And uh, 3,000 people on the cruise. 4,000 of them were Chinese. We had... Uh, we had people from all over the world that were there. And what I love about doing comedy on a cruise is these people then go to their home communities. In fact, some people will leave in the comments, hey, I was on that cruise. They live in Iowa. They live in Wisconsin. They live in Alabama. They live in California. They live in Alaska. And then I go on tour. And I got to tell you, I performed in Hollywood for the last 15 years. And I performed in Hollywood over and over and over. And then I go to somewhere and nobody is like, I saw you in Hollywood. Never. Everywhere I go on the cruise... Everywhere I go after I get off the cruise, those people come with like their neighbors. And they're like, this is the guy we, because you shared a holiday memory with them. So I highly advocate comedians, if you're funny enough to do five separate shows for the same 3,000 people over and over and over, that's hard. Because uh, the first show they love you, the second show they're like, ah, pretty good. The fourth show they're like, you again? And by the fifth show, they're like, Arr! Get him off the ship, Mickey! Make him walk the plank! So I did not have to walk the plank. Things are going better. Another fun fact about cruises is, uh, I, I heard this rumor, and maybe you can tell me if anyone is a cruise aficionado. Have you been on a cruise before? Let me know. They say that they put extra oil and some X-lax in the food items. They lace the food with oil and X-lax so that when you go to the bathroom, it's softer on their plumbing system and makes it run better. So uh, if you have a minor case of diarrhea on every cruise, you might be experiencing a little bit of a conspiracy, a cruise conspiracy, where they're making you have moderate diarrhea. No comment. No comments if I believe that conspiracy or not. That's too much information on a Monday night. What other thing did I accomplish this year since we're getting close? And I highly recommend most of you audit your New Year's resolutions now because then you still have two months to fix it. I made a goal in 2019 to put out a new book. My God, if it didn't take the whole year to do it. Uh, but publishing is a very tricky business. Those of you who have ever published something, I'm a perfectionist, so I want... If you find a typo in my book, I will probably, you know, I'm going to give $20 to any person that finds the typo. Now, that doesn't mean if everyone finds the same typo, I'm giving $20 to all of you. The first person that comes up to me, like, I found a typo, then I'm like, I'll announce it on here and I'll say, you won $20 and the book is 20 bucks. So here's what I want everyone to do. Buy the book. GoFundMe.com slash GoPersian. If you think you're a great proofreader and you want to go head-to-head -head against me, buy the book, I'll send it, quickly read it, 
The book will be out in five weeks. Quickly read it, and if you find a typo first, I'll refund the money for the book. I'll send you 20 bucks back, and I'll give you a shout out on my page. That's a pretty sweet deal, because you got a free book, you help me proofread it, so the next edition it's better, and uh, and you're gonna get, you know, you'll always be known as the person who found a flaw, a mistake. Now don't look for flaws now. You're, I know what's gonna happen. Oh, your nose is kind of bent, and you have black circles under your eyes. Oh, oh, Kayvon, you know, you look older than 10 years ago when I first started watching you. Yeah, I know that. I'm talking about the book type, the flaws in the book, okay? This is the city that never sleeps, and I'm getting tired just talking to you people. All right, so the goal for me is to sell 2019 books by the end of the year 2019. The average book sells, published book by a professional publishing house sells 500 copies the first year. This is some number stuff for my business people. 500 copies is average. I have always tried to be above average. Why? Half Persian, hello, 50% better. So um, I'm gonna try to sell 2019 books. That's five times, four to five times the average. Uh, and you think it's impossible, but I've already sold 112 books. Aha! So we really don't have that far to go. In fact, I want someone to go online and put how many books are left. 2019 minus 112. Let's see how smart my people are. I already know the answer. It's in my head. I can do math that quickly. But I want to see if you guys have the same answer as me. So 2019 minus 112. How many more books to go? Okay, let me just check my math to make sure I did it right. Yep, sure did. All right, so with that said, guys, thank you for tuning in. I'm sorry I didn't talk to you for a whole week, but like I said, I was in Nassau. We were on a ship. It was funny, we left out of New York, and we just hightailed our butt off to get down to Nassau. It was like sunny and nice for three days, and then we hightailed it back, and everyone's getting seasick on the way. Like, and everyone's having minor diarrhea on the ship. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, boy. And then uh, now we're all back on land again. So that's why I was missing in action. But I will always update you. And I still made it a point to go to a Dunkin' Donuts in Nassau and post a new comedy clip. Because I do one a week, one comedy clip a week, every week for the last two years. And it has been epic. That's how I've met many of you. So thank you for tuning in. Our subscribers are close to 30,000 on YouTube, 20,000 on Instagram, and uh, 60,000. Started the year with 49,000 on Facebook, 60. Some of you kids say, nobody uses Facebook anymore. Well, then I just got 11,000 robots to follow me this year. I'll tell you that right now. Thank you guys, everybody, for watching. What else should we talk about before I go? I'm going to answer some questions, and then I have to get out of here. First question that just popped up, Kayvon, would you like to be my friend? That's cool. Remember when you were in, like, elementary school? I saw a little kid do this, just walk up and goes, hey, do you want to be my friend? And the kid's like, okay. Now, I went and tried it at the bar, and every girl rejected me. Hey, you want to be my friend? They're, she, you know, they're like, get out of here, buddy. So, it only works when you're uh, five years old, I believe. All right, let's see what else we have in the comment section. This is the part where you guys have been talking behind my back. I realize you're talking in front of my face, but I'm not looking at the comments while I talk to the camera. So, this is you talking behind my back. Here we go. Kayvon, do you know any other half-Persian comedians? Not really. Uh, Kayvon, hi bro, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. This guy's name is Essa Gay, the Muslim stripper. That's a very interesting name. Essa Gay, the Muslim stripper. Uh, I have a question. If you are a gay Muslim stripper, how long is that career really going to last? Uh, someone says, oh, here's the answer to the questions. We are the champions, my friend. Oh, by the way, Freddie Mercury, his family, which you find out in the movie, is a Parsi. Do you know what a Parsi is? It's the people from the Persian Empire that when the Muslims took over, they had to flee to, to India and they're Zoroastrian Parsis. So in many ways, me and Freddie Mercury are uh, kind of from the same ancestry in a way. Now he's got much more Indian influence, but doesn't he kind of look Persian? Doesn't he kind of look like that guy Reza from the Shahs of Sunset with the big eye mustache? What we do is not a test. I'm rocking to the beat. Ha! Dun, dun, dun. Another one bites dust. The song's gonna be in your head. And I gotta go to sleep. You guys rock. Bye-bye.